This episode of Because Science is sponsored by Fallout 76. Our future begins on November 14th, 2018. How powerful could Fallout's laser weapons actually get? Your first day in post-nuclear America is probably gonna be tough. There is danger around every crumbling corner. Raiders are gonna want your caps, super mutants are gonna want your tasty bones, and death claws, well, you know what death claws are gonna do. But as long as you had a trusty energy weapon at your side, like a laser rifle or a laser pistol, your day should get a lot easier. The effectiveness of these weapons, though, in particular does make you think, how powerful can lasers actually get? In the Fallout universe, laser weapons are very useful tools for making your way safely across the wastes. There are pistols and rifles and even Gatling lasers that will make your foes think twice about trying to take your caps, lest a few VATS assisted shots turn them into ash. Fallout's laser weapons are powerful sci-fi shooters, surely, but they aren't even close to the limits of laser power. So how far can you ramp a laser up and what can it do? First, what is a laser? Well, laser is actually an acronym for light amplification through the stimulated emission of radiation. And what makes laser light so special is that it is coherent. Instead of the normal jumble of wavelengths and directions that is the visible light you usually see, laser light is almost perfectly synced with itself. Light that you get from a light bulb, for example, is kind of all over the place. Laser light, on the other hand, is not only spatially coherent, meaning that it is uniform in space and can be focused down into a tight beam, it is temporally coherent, meaning that instead of a range, you can get a single wavelength from a laser, like a single color. I don't care about your leather jacket, leave me alone. Since in this build we have high intelligence, we can get a little bit more into the physics. Lasers are very complicated devices, but generally speaking, if you want to make one, you need mirrors, atoms, and some application of energy to excite those atoms. The trick to making a good laser is exciting these atoms in just the right way, so that when they relax, they will release the light that you are looking for that will then go on to bounce into other excited atoms. When that happens, those atoms will release light with exactly the same properties, stimulated emission. And if you find the right balance between atoms, energy, and light, soon you have the light that you are looking for exponentially increasing inside of the device. All you need to do then is create an aperture for this light to escape, and bam, you got yourself a laser. The laser design that you're probably most familiar with is like this, your standard laser pointer. And if we wanna start talking about the power of lasers, we can look at the power rating. To be sold as more or less safe, laser pointers are kept on the low end of the power rating scale, maybe one to five milliwatts, meaning that for every second I laze this laser, it's only expending one to five thousandths of a joule of energy. That's not very much, but it's still enough to damage sensitive materials like retina. Now, if we want to get into fallout level laser power, we're gonna have to venture outside of the vault and ramp it up. So let's grab our vault suits and get out there. Welcome to my secret laser facility. This is where we're gonna to put to the test something a bit closer to fallout level. This laser is hundreds of times more powerful than the laser pointer we just had. But no matter the power rating, all lasers deposit their energies in the same way. Light doesn't have mass, but it does have momentum and energy. And what a laser is really good at is taking light's momentum and energy and focusing it down to a single spot. At that spot, energy is being transferred from the laser's beam to the atoms and the molecules at that surface, which makes them move around more quickly, which heats them up. And if things get hot enough, a laser can melt, burn, or even vaporize a target, like I'm about to demonstrate with those sinister looking balloons behind me. Disgusting. The power rating of this laser means that I should be able to easily get through my targets as easily as a BB goes through a rad roach. But before we do any of that, please do not try anything you are about to see at home. We have taken all the safety precautions and this is extremely dangerous. That being said, 
A laser like this is impressive considering it's just light, but we're still pretty low on the power scale, all things considered. Let's go and see a laser that's a few hundred trillion times more powerful than this. It's gonna be rad. Welcome to the NIF, or the National Ignition Facility located here at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in Livermore, California. Behind me is the largest and most energetic laser system on the planet. It's called the National Ignition Facility because the lasers here are so strong they can ignite nuclear fusion, which is perfect because the future of the Fallout universe is fusion powered. So let's go. Sorry, there was like a discoverable location right there. Let's go in. The NIF is absolutely massive. Three American football fields could fit in the square footage here. Now, a place like this is necessarily very complicated, but its inner workings are more or less like what's happening inside of the laser pointer that we had earlier. It's reflecting, amplifying, and directing light towards a target. Except here, they aren't popping balloons. They're subjecting targets to 100 million degrees Celsius and 100 billion atmospheres of pressure. But all these gigantic numbers start as a very small pulse of laser light originating at the nearby oscillator room. That 20 foot long pulse of light is then sent here to the laser bay where it is split into 192 beams and then amplified. When the laser is actually fired, it takes just microseconds for those 192 beams to travel four times down the length of this bay. on a 1500 meter trip to get enough energy. They travel a lot faster than I do though. Oh, daddy needs a stim pack. After they travel through the laser bay, those 192 pulses of light end up here in the target bay, which you nerds may recognize as the engine room from the new Star Trek movies. When they end up here, they have been amplified a quadrillion times past that initial pulse of light. And they are all focused by this gigantic 10 meter diameter metal sphere behind me, both above and below. And all of this is just to focus these beams of light down onto something surprisingly small, almost a single point. This. This is the target of everything this gigantic facility is doing. It's a tiny pellet of isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. All the lasers are shooting just right at that red little dot there. When these perfectly timed, perfectly aligned beams finally meet, they converge on the container of this hydrogen, and in just 20 billionths of a second, they obliterate it, which releases a maelstrom of x-rays which act to implode the hydrogen in a controlled fusion reaction. The men and women who run the National Ignition Facility are in charge of a laser so powerful that it can literally simulate the process that powers the stars here on Earth. Bringing this kind of cosmic calamity down to our planet, though, does take tremendous power. If these scientists ran this laser continuously, it would draw 500 trillion watts of power, 200 times more power than the entirety of humanity uses at any one time. If we estimate the power of a fallout laser weapon to be maybe enough to vaporize an entire person's water, then this place is a million times stronger than that. Of course, all of this can't fit in the palm of your hand like it does in Fallout, but even Fallout sci-fi laser weapons, this facility proves have something to aspire to, because science.
Thank you again to Fallout 76 for sponsoring this episode of Because Science. Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of Skyrim and Fallout 4, welcome you to Fallout 76, the online prequel where every surviving human is a real person. Work together, or not, to survive. Under the threat of nuclear annihilation, you will experience the largest, most dynamic world ever created in the legendary Fallout universe. Fallout 76 will be available worldwide on Wednesday, November 14th, but you can pre-order the game at participating retailers today. Play the beta first on Xbox One.